enemies be scattered. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Dear friends, we welcome you to this Sunday morning broadcast of the Mother Zion Hour, emanating from the main sanctuary of the Mother African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the Church of Black Liberation, founded in 1796 here in Harlem, New York City. We are grateful and thrilled. We consider ourselves blessed that we have this opportunity to share the love of God with you and to bring the Holy Gospel to you into your home. Your home is your humble abode, but at this moment it's an extension site for Mother Amy Zion Church. And we are so glad that we are able, though at a distance, to worship together the true and living God in spirit and in truth. So come along with us on this journey as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. church as we know it and as we celebrate this Pentecost Sunday on today a time that the church renews itself refreshes itself and reminds itself of its existence in God's name let us sing together that great and appropriate hymn of the A.M. Zion Church hymn number 216 Holy Spirit Truth Divine let us share together as we sing to the glory of God.
grateful and blessed of God this morning that our Episcopal leader, the 97th Bishop in the line of succession, the Right Reverend Dennis Vernon Proctor, presiding bishop of the New York Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, has a very special greeting to all of us here today. And as you watch this reading of our presiding prelate and of our missionary supervisor, Mrs. D. Diane Proctor, enjoy these warm sentiments that they extend to all of us on this the Lord's Day, Pentecost Sunday. Good morning. Happy Pentecost Sunday to you. What a joy it is for me to greet you and to have the supervisor with me. Matter of fact, why don't you greet us real quick? Greetings, Northeastern Episcopal District. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am truly rejoicing and thanking him for being connected to you yet again, albeit modern technology. I encourage you to use this avenue also to stay connected to each other, to continue to pray without ceasing, and to believe and trust God to see us through. God bless you and happy Pentecost Sunday. Indeed, it is a happy Pentecost Sunday. Can you believe that this is the first time in 41 years that my wife and I have spent this much time together without other people, without children, without churches, without, it has been an enjoyable and different experience. God maketh us to lie down to give us messages mm -hmm. and how we appreciate that. Our prayers are also with the members of the Northeastern Episcopal District. We've had more death, more sickness, more confinement than any other Episcopal area in our connection and indeed throughout the land. Our prayers are with you. They're with you because all of us need to have the ministering power of God who said that he is the great God of all comfort and he will bring to us the solace that only he can. Remember this, that ultimate healing is when God takes us from these bodies of flesh and blood and gives us a glorified body. That's ultimate healing. No more sickness, no more pain, no high blood, no diabetes, no COVID-19, nothing that will be able to separate us from the presence and the joy of Almighty God. We're people who believe that our churches are going to open as soon as it's safe for us to come in. We believe in the blood of Jesus. Yes, we plead it and we believe in it, but we also believe in Purell. We believe in being washed in the blood of the Lamb, but we also want to wash our hands and it is important now on this day of Pentecost, Acts 1 said they were in one place on one accord. And as they move into Acts 2, when the spirit comes in, it tells us that it's possible to be in one place and not be on one accord. That means that we're an aggregation and not a congregation. But today we are congregation because we're on one accord and we're thanking God for each other. Please be safe. Please check on one another if it's only to find out how you're doing, how you're feeling. But we are indeed family. And so it's good to just know that you're there. We're OK over here. We are sheltering in place like they did in the early church. And we're just praying that we will know when God wants us to come back into the physical building. I know we're going to be dancing up a storm coming down the aisle because we've been away for so long. Thank God for you. Thank you for remembering my birthdays. Thank you for just the small things that we do, the funny cards, the funny statements, whatever was sent. It means a great deal to us to know that we're connected and you see my sometimes sarcastic sense of humor that you all can relate to and I appreciate you. Well, I think that's long enough on your video service. We thank God for you. Goodbye, see you soon.
singers accompanied by a fine accompanist just made it very clear to all of us that the Holy Spirit is indeed welcomed here in this space. But not only is the Holy Spirit welcomed inside of the walls of Mother Zion, but you ought to open up your mouth right now in your home and say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my home. You are welcome to come rest, rule, and abide in my abode right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, dear ladies, for that marvelous moving selection. Our lesson now from God's holy word is found in the Acts of the Apostles. Acts, the first chapter. Yes, you heard that correct. I am not going to Acts, the second chapter. This chapter where I trust that just about every preacher on the globe is preaching from today. But I prefer, for what we have been experiencing lately, to hear these words, these sentiments of Jesus that are found in Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter. And beginning at verse 4, we find these words. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power 
when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. My dear friends and partners in the struggle, here rendeth this reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the first chapter. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us now share together for those of you who have your hymnals at home and who would like to join in with us in the singing. Let us share together as we sing together hymn number 301. Hymn number 301. Thou uncreated source of love. That great hymn of the A.M. Zion Church appropriate for Pentecost Sunday, number 301. Find 
these moving words that we could all use this time in our journey as pavement level people striving to make heaven our home. Here now are these words spoken by Jesus. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, actually I like the way King James says it, when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This morning I would like to preach from this thought. Power for the powerless. Power for the powerless. Simply jogging through a neighborhood in Brunswick, Georgia. Or how about sleeping in one's home in Louisville, Kentucky? What about being pulled over while driving in Minneapolis, Minnesota to die with one's head crushed to concrete while an officer placed all of the weight on his body upon his knees, upon the neck of a man crying, I can't breathe. It appears to me that we have been rendered once again powerless. Those who are supposed to defend us are the ones who are brutalizing us. One can't even walk in Central Park in New York City without being a threat to whiteness in the vicinity. Powerless. In the midst of a world and a culture where even free speech is being attacked. The leader of the free world the other day is very upset that he is now being fact-checked on Twitter and social media. Now the resident of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue can't just say whatever he wants to say without being fact-checked now. And because of such, now he is seeking to levy upon social media outlets uh, the hand or the rod of Washington upon their desire to keep free speech free, but at least truthful. Power for the powers. When governors all over America are opening up their states, when the president of the United States of America tells us last week, I'm opening up the churches as if he had the key. Opens up churches, telling people you can now go back to church while he goes to the golf course. Powers. We keep dying as a people with COVID-19 ravishing our communities and our churches. On tomorrow, right here in this church downstairs, we will be offering COVID-19 testing right here in this church because we are tired of people in our community dying of COVID-19 without access to testing. That's what the church is about in 2020. That is what we are engaged in doing right now. That is what Jesus requires us to do on Pentecost Sunday, to really be the church in action in the midst of this world where everyone seems powerless. Especially those of us of a darkened view. Powerless. Where if you try to fight back the abuse that has been levied upon you, you can be killed with the following statement attached to it. 
They were resisting arrest. Can black people resist the oppression that we face each and every day? Is it possible that you and I can stand flat-footed and speak truth to power without being shot down or killed? Because Washingtonian power flaunts its power as it is the highest power source. Political power is so braggadocious and egocentricitous. It claims to be absolute as if there is no authority above Washington power. Those of us who know God, those of us who believe that we are called of God to serve the people of God, we know that we have another power source. And the power source that we have does not bow down to the edicts of Washington, but the power source that we have is absolute because it comes for the one that woke us up this morning and started us on our way. We are on one side, dear friends, powerless. But on the other side, we are powerful. We are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. And when God made you and I, God did not make a mistake. He made you just as you are. And unfortunately, your blackness at times can make you a bullseye for attacks in America. You'll have to be smarter. You have to run faster. You must dribble better. Catch a football with more precision. Think better, preach better, dress better, do everything better while the bullseye is still on. But friends, here is what I have to say. Even with all that has been taken from us, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, the lack of opportunity, unequal protection under the law, little access to fair and affordable housing, millions of Americans losing their jobs, the vast majority of them already marginalized by the culture and the society. We are dying in droves by COVID-19. Let me tell you one thing we have. We have power. How do I know we have power? Because Jesus made it very clear. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Not you shall receive power when you switch political parties. Not you shall receive power when you find me able to move up to the east side to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Not you shall receive power when you finally get that degree you've worked towards for so many years. But Jesus says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Isn't this Pentecost Sunday? Isn't this the Sunday in which we place great emphasis upon the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost rest, ruling, and abiding in our lives, the birthday of the church when the Holy Spirit came down and empowered seemingly powerless people and empowered them to do extraordinary and powerful things in the name of God? Yes, you shall receive power. I'm talking about you in your home. You who are not even sure how you're going to pay your power bill. You have power. All you have to do, 
has asked the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you. All you have to do is ask the Holy Ghost to be your friend. Ask the Holy Ghost to speak before you open up your mouth. Ask the Holy Ghost to go and arrive before you even set out from where you're leaving from. Ask the Holy Ghost to go before you and around you to cover your home, to cover your family, to cover all those whom you love, be they near and far. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, says Jesus. What's this thing about power? What is power? How can we gain access to power from heaven when we have absolutely no power upon earth? Where we are caused to live lives seemingly with other people pulling the strings like we are somehow puppets of sorts uh, being danced by Washington at any whim they may possibly have. Stories told about that famous blackout in New York City that happened decades ago. All of New York City was cloaked in other darkness, kind of like uh, James Weldon Johnson talked about it. Blackout darker than a hundred midnights down a cypress swamp. With the entire city was cloaked in utter darkness, one could barely see one's hand in front of one's face. The power plants around could not keep up with the capacity of the new light and the new buildings and the new things that were being constructed. Even the power plant gave up its, op its ability to produce power for people who needed it. But a strange anomaly was occurring out in New York Harbor. The Statue of Liberty on a Liberty Island still had her light shining bright. It baffled people. No one could understand why all of New York City was in utter darkness, but the Statue of Liberty was still shining bright. So even after the lights came back on and the power generators and the power plants were back operating again, this still baffled some of the engineers. So they put on electrical, they put on diving equipment, scuba equipment, and they went down under the Statue of Liberty to see what the big deal was. How in the world could the Statue of Liberty have power uh, allowing it to shine its light when all of New York City was cloaked in other, utter darkness? Well, the divers came back up and the engineers wanted to know uh, how was this possible. The engineers said to those who had come up, uh, please tell us uh, how it is that the light was still shining. And the divers looked straight at the engineers and said, well, it's very simple. The Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor is actually plugged in to New Jersey. Dear friends, whatever is going on around you, whatever powerless on one side. You may feel like your back is up against the wall. You may feel as if you are stuck between a rock and a hard place. It is very possible that you feel denuded and disrespected and disregarded as less than human in American culture. But please hear me when I tell you, you and I have another power source. We're not plugged into Washington. We're not plugged into degradation. We're plugged in to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, lift me up. Lord, let me stand my faith on heaven's table and a higher thing than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Friends, you have more power than you have ever imagined. My question to you is, now that you know you have the power, what are you going to do with it? Let us pray.
most wise and eternal God, thou in whom we live and move and have our being, to you, the God of our weary years and the God of our silent tears, we give you thanks, O God, that you have given us power, power to get out of the stuff we've gotten in, power to speak love in a world wrought with hate, power to speak forgiveness even when those who have offended us haven't even stopped to say their sorry. We know that all power, O God, comes from thee, and we are grateful and thankful that we feel empowered even on this Sunday morning to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could have ever thought of ourselves to be able to accomplish. Lord, save thy people. Send healing now across the land. We pray in advance for the hundreds or perhaps the thousands of people who will enter this church this week seeking to be tested for COVID-19. I ask, O oh God, that your healing presence will encounter them when they get here. No, we're not a hospital in the traditional sense, but we are a hospital where we care for those who have been wounded along life's journey, where we build up those who are weak, where we lift up those whose heads are bowed down with the cares of this world. Lord, save thy people. Renew now, O oh God, thy church all over the world as we celebrate the church's birthday as Pentecost Sunday on today. Give the church new vigor, new fire, and new energy to do your will and your work all over the globe. Now, God, for medical professionals, for those who work to ensure our care, for every essential worker, for every pastor who doesn't know what the week will bring, for every pastor who's now afraid to answer their phone because they don't want to hear another parishioner has died. I know what that's like. But oh God, keep your loving arms around us. Comfort those who mourn this day and remind them that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. God, make a way even if it has to come out of nowhere. Now God, hear now the cries of your children who are crying out to you, whispering their prayer requests from their homes right now. Oh God, incline your ear to their prayer and our prayer. And grant us, Lord, thy peace. Oh God, we thank you for thy sustaining power that has kept us low these many years. And the power that we trust will keep us on tomorrow. Give us wisdom. Give us courage for the facing of this hour and the hours that are ahead. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, if you have watched this broadcast today and you've heard this sermon and you desire to become a Christian, let me tell you how simple it is. Number one, it's already paid for. Jesus has already paid and paved the way that salvation can be a very real reality for you right now. But all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Welcome Jesus into your heart today and I promise you it will be the best decision you will ever make in this life. And dear friends, if you have made that decision today, if you desired to step away from the old you and to embrace a new you with Jesus as your leader, we want to hear from you. Drop us a note in the comments or DM the church. Send us a direct message with your name and your address. We want to stay in contact with you. We want to send you some information and we want to stay as your supporting cast as you work with Jesus to get you to heaven uh, in God's time. Dear friends, thank you for joining this Mother's Eye in Our broadcast today. 
we would like to share with you a very important announcement. You've heard me reference it in this service already, but if you are listening and you are here in New York City and you desire to be, te have, uh, be tested for COVID-19, either the diagnostic test or the antibody test, those tests will be administered here in Mother A.M. Zion Church June 1st through June 5th. That starts tomorrow beginning at 11 a.m. and going to 7 p.m. every evening. An appointment is required. Uh, information about that will show up uh, in the comments in the video today. Uh, but we want you to have that number. Call that number. Make an appointment to come. Do it for yourselves. Do it for your families. Be sure you understand your status in the midst of this season. Your life is too precious and too valuable not to know what's going on inside of you. Many of us are asymptomatic. We have it but don't have any symptoms. So it's very important, dear friends, to get tested so that you can get the help you need and also ensure that the most vulnerable around us, those with pre-existing conditions, those north of age of, of 65, uh, are not in any uh, respect placed in jeopardy for us passing it and not knowing that we're passing it. That's the type of church Mother Zion is. We don't want, just want you to be spiritually healthy. We want you to be mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy as well. So all of you are invited. You don't have to be a member of this church to come down and get tested. But when we are able to come back to church, remember the churches that sought to be a benefit to you in the midst of this quarantine season. And that leads me to my next point. We need you to give, dear friends. The members of Mother Zion Church have been very faithful, offering the very best that they have during this season. But we need your help. Please go right now. Don't wait till this broadcast is over. Pull out your smartphone right now and go to cash app, dollar sign, Mother A.M.E. Zion Church, as well as you can find us on Give a Fly. When this broadcast is over, stick around for the closing credits and all of the information I just shared with you will be rolling on the closing credits. We want everyone to be a part of what Mother Zion Church is seeking to do in the midst of this terrible pandemic in which we are experiencing. The church building is closed for usual operations, but Mother A and Zion Church has never closed. We are still doing the work of God in this community at payment level, but we need your help and your support to do it. Dear friends, we've come to the end of this Mother Zion Hour broadcast, and we thank you for worshiping with us today. Let us share together as we sing our closing hymn today. I pray that you have hymnals nearby that you can share with us in the singing of this great hymn of the AME Zion Church, this appropriate hymn for Pentecost Sunday. Hymn number 206, There's a Light Upon the Mountains. Let us sing now to the glory of God.
folly, and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, 